right. Um, I never thought I'd make a video like this, but um, I think there's an important conversation to be had, and I just want to be fully accountable, honest, and uh, transparent with all of you guys. So I'd like to start by thanking every single person who's came out uh, in the past week um, to speak about different ways in which my behavior has made them feel um, uncomfortable or pressured during a sexual situation, and to people who said that I've made unwanted advances and uh, had a hard time with rejection. Um, I'm sure this was not easy to do. It's never easy to speak out. And it was uh, hard for me to hear as well, because to be honest with you, up until this point, I didn't even really realize that I had this pattern that had affected multiple people. Um, I'd also like to apologize for my silence. Um, I think that when this stuff first came out, I was in a state of denial and shock. Um, I was, you know, just riding the high for my movie that just came out. And then within 48 hours, I was denounced by my closest collaborators and uh, my name was printed in, in, in 40 different news outlets uh, next to the words sexual misconduct. And I just kind of spiraled into a mental health crisis. Uh, I'm okay now, but I don't really think this is about me. This is about the people that I've affected. So I just want to express my complete sympathy, respect, and uh, support for anyone who I've done wrong by. And I really want to do better and be fully accountable for everything that I've done. So that being said, I want to make a few things clear. Um, I've always taken no for an answer. Um, the internet's favorite vagabond is being accused of sexual coercion, manipulation, and assault by multiple women all across America. But before we get into the most recent allegations, let's take a look back at Andrew's history with being accused of sexual misconduct. The first time dates back to June 10th, 2020, when an Instagram user named Sophia posted on their story alleging they hung out with him and he was trying so hard to F my drunk friend who made it clear she said no. And that Andrew is a manipulative ass mother effer who was using his platform to get girls to sleep with him. This this user then posted a story from another alleged victim that said this. Yeah, he went to school with me my freshman year. R worded an underage girl in Seattle and was a total creep to a bunch of other girls at my friend's high school in Seattle. I hung out with him once my freshman year when I was still 17 and he aggressively came on to me even after I told him now multiple times, then tried to kiss me and get me to go back to his place even after I told him I was uncomfortable. Then he tried following me and my roommate home in the dark, piece of effing garbage. The next incident came in August 14th, 2021, where an Instagram user by the name of File Format alleges Andrew knowingly sexually assaulted his friend and got away with it. This user then claimed that five to ten different women came forward claiming similar experiences with Andrew after he released his friend's story, three of which are allegedly underage. When confronted about the validity of the story, a Reddit user claiming to be file format stated this. The incident happened. I spoke with the victim after. Andrew knows what he did. Multiple women have came forward, some publicly. Others are scared too, and for good reason. Look at how y'all are acting. Then a 17-year-old came forward with a similar story from this exact same time frame. This is the Navy story. My freshman year, he, 22, DM'd, name redacted, who was 17, and asked to hang out with us. We met up with him and he brought us to the Navy base and got weirdly possessive over me, grabbing me all day weirdly and kept trying to get me alone, even though we were with a small group of all 17, barely 18-year-olds. Then, me and name redacted made the decision that he was getting weird with me and tried ditching him. We took an Uber to the Willow because our friend was doing a rap show. We left and then Andrew took his own Uber to the same place. He kept going into the bar and buying me shots, then pulled me around the corner and forcibly tried to make out with me until my roommate noticed and stopped him. Then he got her to go away again and I kept telling him I had a boyfriend and he said, it's cool, I have a long distance girlfriend, we are open, do you want to have a threesome with us when she comes to town next week? And kept me in a little corner pushing me about until my roommate's boyfriend came over and tried to fight his 22 year old ass. Then we broke away and tried to walk home, just the two of us, and he followed us by himself halfway back to the dorms until we literally sprinted and ran away from him. And that brings us to the most recent allegations that surfaced just this week. They first started when a TikTok user named Caroline came forward and discussed her interactions with Andrew. She claimed she met Andrew in St. Petersburg after he had a falling out with the crew member and needed somewhere to stay. They hung out, had some drinks, and returned to her home. She said she made it clear she didn't want to get intimate and repeatedly resisted his sexual advances until ultimately giving in and engaging in intercourse with him. She speaks about how it hurt to see someone lauded as a social justice warrior in the public eye get away with what she considers sexual assault. You shouldn't be supporting him. And at the end of the day, like I've told close friends of mine, I've tried coming out about this before, and he texted me saying that it basically ruined his life and that his life was over now because of things that I said and other women have come forward to me. A lot of people came forward with stories about Andrew after this was made public. One claiming Andrew was canceled in New Orleans for presumably similar circumstances and kicked off his show Quarter Confessions that he used to host. Then someone claimed he is known in Seattle for sexual misconduct. 
another claiming he assaulted a former roommate who was terrified of coming forward, and many others detailing similar circumstances, even down to the line Andrew Callahan uses about having a falling out with a crew member and needing somewhere to stay. One of these people go by the username Moldy Freckle and alleged she was also assaulted by Andrew. After angry Channel 5 fans accosted the girl, she then took to her Instagram account and shared her story firsthand. I'm just gonna, in brief, say that I had hooked up with Andrew previously. Um, he creeped me out, made me feel weird, was mean, demanding. Um, he hit me up again after this time uh, to hang out with me again. And I said, no, I don't want to hang out with you more. I don't want to sleep with you ever again. Uh, asked me why. I told him why he invited me to go out to dinner so he could apologize. I go to the dinner. He's not really talking to me. And then I'm like, so did you have something you wanted to say? And he's like, oh yeah. Do you want to have sex in your car after this? And I was like, no, I don't. Is there anything else you want to say? Um, and she was like, oh yeah. Sorry if I made you feel uncomfortable. Are you joking? You really don't want to have sex in your car after this? And he asked that like probably five more times. Like, you're joking, right? Like, you do, you wanna have sex in your car for this, right? And I was like, no. So um, I told him I would take him home because he lived close by, but that I did not want to have sex in my car at all. I did not wanna have sex with him again, ever. Um, and after we got to my car, he started advancing towards me, um, started touching my inner thigh, um, and pulled me forward and started kissing my neck. Um, so I really couldn't move out of the position. Um, he was holding me like tightly and, um, he proceeded to put his hand down my pants. I told him to stop. I told him to get off of me multiple times. Um, he tried to put my hand down his pants and I was, you know, fighting against him during this, told him to please stop. Um, and he said, um, you could at least suck my dick. And I said, no, I don't want to do that. Get out of my car. At that point, it was, I'm not taking you home anymore. Get the fuck out of my car. And he just got mad, really. He was mad um, that I would even say that but at the same time he was laughing at me um and continued to try to kiss me and was like are you serious come on come on um yeah it was not fun so i told him to get out of my car again he wouldn't get out and he said you could at least take me home so I realized at this point, I would not be able to physically push him out of my car. So I started driving quickly and erratically down the road. I pulled into a busier street and I stopped abruptly thinking, you know, like maybe someone will realize something is wrong or if someone is honking at me, like he'll feel uncomfortable and want to leave the car. But I guess it did make him uncomfortable that I did that. And I told him to get the fuck out of my car. Um, and he was like, can I at least get a kiss goodbye? And I said, fuck no, get the fuck out. He left, um, never spoke to him or saw him again.
In a statement to TMZ, the 25-year-old video journalist lawyer danced around claims that Callahan pressured women into having sex with him. Okay, statement to TMZ. Okay, so it goes back to the TMZ thing. A legal rep for the journalist tells TMZ, Andrew is devastated he is being accused of any type of physical or mental coercion against anyone. Conversations about pressure and consent are extremely important, and Andrew wants to have these conversations so he can continue to learn and grow. Okay, that's not really a rebuttal. Adding, while every dynamic is open to interpretation and proper communication is critical from all those involved, uh, repeated requests for money should not be part of these conversations. Uh, for those unaware, Andrew got hit in TikTok after a woman named Caroline Elise recounted an alleged incident, post direct knowledge. A source with direct knowledge tells us Caroline requested money from Andrew, referencing the fat check he got from HBO for his documentary. She allegedly asked to be paid just minutes before the doc aired. We're told Andrew didn't pay up, and Caroline uploaded the TikTok a few days later, urging others to come forward, which is exactly what happened. So she asked, she asked for money, basically, like, like, F you give me money, or I'll like come out with this. Um, if that's the case, that is, um, is that blackmail or is that extortion? Which one of those two isn't? You shouldn't do that. The text asking for money was posted on the H3 sub. From the Channel 5 subreddit, a friend of Caroline posted the text of her asking Andrew for money. Here it is. I don't really want a response from you because I already know your skewed version of what happened the last time I saw you. I just want you to know that you, seeing friends of mine promote your new show, which I'm not discounting, came with a lot of hard work. Hurts me in ways I wish you could feel sometimes. Anyway, if HBO cuts you a fat check and you in any way feel like helping contribute to the massive amount of therapy bills I've accrued due to the night you coerced me and my resulting trauma, my bedmo is blank, thanks. Okay, that seems like... So, to be clear, I think this is bad behavior. However, the existence of this message doesn't really lend any support uh, for or against the claims made, I don't think. That's not even extortion, though. Um... Actually, technically, you're right. It's not. Because the message here doesn't say, I'm going to come forward with this if you don't. Yeah, no, sorry. No, it's not. Yeah. She she didn't word it in, in a way that's, um, yeah. The way, the way it was phrased from the TMZ thing, or the way the lawyer made it sound, I guess. Blackmail was insinuating in the article they conveniently left out. She was asking for her therapy bills. His hole's just getting deeper and deeper. Yeah. The... I, I, I can, I mean, this does come across, this, I do think it's like a weird message to send, kind of, and it does make the TikTok that came out later feel, I don't know, like, a little more option B, and that she wouldn't have done it if she'd gotten option A, you know? I, I do think you should come forward with stuff like this and, and not be, like, bought off from it, but it's not extortion or blackmail, because that isn't even mentioned. No, no, I, I'm not, I'm not, th this is not a trial as to whether or not she acts perfectly or not, you know, that's not. What's what's being discussed here? Sympathy, respect, and uh, support for anyone who I've done wrong by, and I really want to do better and be fully accountable for everything that I've done. So that being said, I want to make a few things clear. Um, I've always taken no for an answer. Um, as far as consent, I've never uh, overstepped that line. And I'm like, so did you have something you wanted to say? And he's like, oh yeah. Do you want to have sex in your car after this? And I was like, no, I don't. And he asked that like, probably five more times like you're joking right like you do you want to have sex in your car for this right and i was like no get out of my car at that point it was i'm not taking you home anymore get the fuck out of my car and he just got mad hung out with him and he was trying so hard to f my drunk friend who made it clear she said no and i was very clear about the fact that we are not hooking up But, you know, I think I want to have a more nuanced and important conversation about power dynamics, pressure, and uh, coercion. Because, you know, like I said, I think for, for a long time, I was behaving in a way that I actually thought was normal. Um, I thought that, you know, 
going home from the bar alone made you a loser. Um, I thought that persistence was a form of flattery. And I thought that, you know, if at first somebody was reluctant, you know, they're playing hard to get, just try harder. And if you think someone's feeling you, you know, make a physical advance and uh, see if they go with it. And at the end of the day, like I've told close friends of mine, I've tried coming out about this before and he texted me saying that it basically ruined his life and that his life was over now because of things that I said and other women have come forward to me. And I think that especially I realized when so many uh, young people, especially young men, rushed to defend me uh, when this stuff first started coming out, that this type of sex pest behavior is normalized. And a lot of people think this stuff is normal when I don't think that it is. And I think that I want to be fully responsible for not having a fluid understanding of consent and what enthusiastic two-way consent looks like. Um, that being said, a lot of the things that have been said online about me uh, are not true. A lot of things are missing really important contextual information that I think would change people's interpretation of a lot of these situations, but I'm not here to invalidate anybody's lived experience. Uh, if you feel pressured, you know, that's just what it is. I hope that young people and young men in particular can use my mistakes to learn and uh, move through life with a better understanding of consent. Um, as far as what I have planned, I'm not really sure what comes next. I mean, obviously, you know, reporting is my one true love and I'm 25 years old and I have my whole life ahead of me, but I really think that I need to do some serious work on myself and uh, figure myself out. So I'm gonna start therapy sessions pretty much immediately. Um, also, not to blame alcohol, but I truly believe that uh, alcohol was a contributing factor to my poor decision making. And I think that alcohol in general has had a devastating impact on my life. So I think I'm going to uh, make the decision to join the 12 step program for Alcoholics Anonymous. And during this journey into sobriety, I want to take a serious step back from public life and, like I said, figure myself out. Um, and I hope that this reaches uh, the ears of anyone who's felt affected by me, um, I'd love to reach out to you or you can reach out to me even just for me to say, I'm sorry. And uh, I really apologize and I appreciate you all. Um, I also wanna apologize to um, my closest collaborators, you know, my friends, my family, and people who will have to wear this stain on their career forever. Um, you guys don't deserve this and uh, I love you guys. Uh, that being said, uh, if you never wanna watch Channel 5 again, um, I understand. Um, I hope you remember the uh, missions of radical empathy and uh, media literacy uh, that we have tried to put into the world through our through our coverage. Um, all right, that's all I want to say.